Okay, in this video we're going to check out Emulation Station. That's the interface that's on the screen now and is what you launch the games from. So behind this you've got all the emulators and the games and you can just navigate through here and start the game off. That's the main interface for RetroPie. Now the interface itself, Emulation Station, I think originally was developed by Aloshi um, but there's not been a lot of development recently so um, the features within it have stayed fairly static but a lot of users uh, do want extra features like uh, show me just the favorites or hide this particular game um, or don't let me use this particular interface because it, it might um, change my settings so there's various things that users want on this but um, like I say the development's been fairly static so because of that some other developers have forked this particular um, version of emulation station and started making changes and that's what we're going to look at now. So the specific one we're going to take a look at is developed by a user called Zigarana and I'll put some links in the description so you can see the history of the development of this and some more information. But essentially it's going to let you do um, a lot more with this interface so it's a bit more flexible. Now you should be aware that it's in experimental section in RetroPie at the moment. It's important that you know it's not sort of uh, like a final version or it's supported fully. Um, within the RetroPie environment so you need to make sure if you do choose to use this that you're happy that maybe you've got a backup of your SD card or you don't mind if there's a bit of a problem with this when it runs um, so until it is a lot more stable just make sure that any changes you make you don't mind if it's gonna uh, change your setup okay so the the main changes within this new interface by Zigarana are that it can put it into different UI modes so the ones that have been developed are called Full, Kiosk and Child. And the Full method um, is basically exactly the same as Emulation Station offers now. So um, you can do everything you can there plus the extra features that are deployed. Kiosk cuts it down a bit so you can't choose so many options and Child cuts it down a step further. And I'll run through those options now. But on the screen is the standard Emulation Station. And you can tell this if you press Start. At the bottom of that screen there, you can see it says Emulation Station version 2.0.1a and that's the one that's bundled in RetroPie at the moment. I've built this image based on the stock 3.6 RetroPie and I've also installed a scraper but that's about it so it's, it's really sort of standard what I've got here. And you can see here on these options you've got a scraper option, the inbuilt one. Now a lot of people would instead use uh, Stephen Self scraper which you can find in the RetroPie setup section. So this scraper doesn't often get used but obviously it does change um, your game list XML files so if you use that you can change the system where you might not want to or if you lend your uh, Raspberry Pi to somebody with RetroPile they might run that and they don't mean to so that's one of the options they can get removed with the upgraded or different emulation station and I think the term that uh, the new emulation station from Zigarana um, is termed as kid friendly or child friendly so um, on that one this option is removed you've got UI settings um, I think that option is removed as well and configure input is removed so it's much more difficult to make it um, have any issues uh, and yeah we'll run through the options so these options will be reduced we'll see what happens there and you can also see here currently when you go to the quit menu there's an option to quit emulation station and that will just take you to the command line and that's another section that's been taken out as well because if you did that it would be a bit confusing to a user who isn't too technical about how to get back to emulation station so it's all about reducing the possibilities of, of screwing up your setup really okay so what we'll do is we'll drop out to the command line or no actually we'll do it the other way I'll drop out to the command line but what you can do is run the setup from if we scroll across We've got the RetroPie menu here, and this is probably the easiest way of doing it. Although, because it makes changes to Emulation Station, maybe it's not necessarily the best way of doing it in this instance. So what I'll do, I will drop out of Emulation Station, and we'll just use the command line to run the RetroPie setup and install it. Okay, so I'll press Start, choose Quit, and Quit Emulation Station then this will take you to the command line and what we'll do here is run the setup and uh, install the new version. Okay, here we are at the command line prompt. What we're going to do is change the directory to retropy-setup and we're going to run the setup script with sudo full stop forward slash 
retropy underscore setup dot sh. Okay, so now I'm running 3.6 that I mentioned earlier, but in 3.6, um, as it stands, there was uh, no option to do this in the experimental package. So if I look in experimental package and down the bottom, we should we want the emulation station um, kid friendly version to try that out. Um, but it's not currently packaged in there. So what I'm going to do is update the RetroPie setup script. Now you might not need to do this if you're running a later version of RetroPie. Um, so in the future it may well already be there under the experimental section. But because I'm running 3.6 and I haven't updated the script yet, I'm going to do that. Press enter. Obviously for this and some other future steps, you'll need to make sure your Pi has got an internet connection on Wi-Fi or Ethernet cable. But uh, this shouldn't take a moment. It just download the latest script, update it, and within that version, you'll see that we've got the option to change this uh, this emulation station. Now, just to reiterate again, if you're if you've got like a, a build that's nearly there and you just want to try this out, do be aware that it's still really being tested in a few areas. So um, it might be good if you had a separate card just to try it out on first. Okay, so that's collected the script, and now if I choose experimental package down the bottom there we go emulation station kids so what this will do I'll hit OK now and this will download it it will build it it will replace the existing one it do everything for you and then it'll take you back to the prompt but it does take some time uh, maybe 10 minutes or so I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3 but this principle should work on any of the um, Raspberry Pis that support RetroPie but now would be a good time to grab a cup of tea or something. What I'll do, I'll pause the video and then just uh, start it up when it's completed. But this, like I say, when you run it on yours, uh, will take some time. So just bear that in mind. Okay, there we go. It's uh, downloaded, compiled, built, uh, replaced the old one and ready to use. And just to make a sort of clean restart, we'll do a reboot, I think. So at this point, if you hit cancel, and cancel again and if we type sudo reboot here it should reboot right back up into emulation station it'll still pick up your controller or whichever you've uh, connected up uh, for reference my setup here at the moment has just got a keyboard plugged in and a iBuffalo USB uh, controller so uh, I'll reboot now and go back to emulation station Okay, emulation station starting up. Now you can check that it's been installed okay by pressing start. And you can see at the bottom there it says emulation station with the same version as before, but it says underscore GUI modes v6. So you can tell that that element's changed. And um, yeah, that's essentially all it is to update, really easy. Um, but now we can see the difference that it's going to make to the games and the interface itself. So, first off, it's got three views, so three UI modes. If you press start, you can check these out. Under uh, UI settings and UI mode, you've got full, which is exactly as it was before, all of the features plus the extra elements. So you can do things like um, hide particular ROMs, set something to be child only, or you can set it as a favorite. So it's just uh, got a few bells and whistles there. The kiosk mode, will start reducing um, the options. I mentioned earlier, you won't see things like configure input anymore, um, UI settings, scraper, edit, meta edit the metadata, that sort of thing. Um, so you won't see any of those. And also when you're in kiosk mode, you won't see any of the hidden entries, any of the hidden ROMs that you set as well. So it's like a reduced lockdown view. And then you've got kid. Um, so that child mode is the only difference that's got over kiosk is that that mode will only show you games that you've set to be whitelisted or child friendly so it'll have the kid flag and besides that it's the same as kiosk so it's just a, a further cut down version really okay so those three modes that we've got there allow um, extra tagging in the game list XML. so in the metadata it can add an extra tag and you can see that by if we go into the snes games i've got here I've already scraped these, so we've got the extra data, and I scrape that with the uh, S-Self or Stephen Self's scraper that's in the RetroPie setup menu, but you can scrape using the internal one. 
doesn't really uh, make too much of a difference there. And you can see we've got the image, we've got the description, and um, the other bits like developer, publisher, players, that sort of thing. Okay, now what we're going to do on a particular game, we'll set different um, we'll set different flags on these. So first one, at Razor. If I press Select here, I've got an option to. What's done there as well? You see the Surprise Me option. And that's effectively um, choose a random game for me. So it's another feature in this new version of Emulation Station as well. So if I choose Surprise Me, it'll take me to a random entry. Now I haven't put many ROMs up here, so I'm going to get examples that I wouldn't normally expect, maybe. So here it's taken me to a particular entry in the Amiga one. If I press Select again, Surprise Me again, I've got Zork 3, do it again, and I've got. Um, a DOS emulator. So you get the idea, it's just a way to quickly select a random game. So if we go back to stairs, and what we're going to do is press uh, select in here, and we can see edit this game's metadata. And once we've done this, once we've changed a few games to have maybe a hidden flag or a favourite, you can then say for on a persistent basis, just show me the favourites. So it'd be a, you know, cut down list really. So if we edit this one and we've got all the standard bits of metadata at the top and then the three new sections here, we've got favorite, kid game and hidden. Okay, so for Actraiser, if we say that's a favorite on, which is save there. So that one's set to a favorite. Now if I go harvest moon and this one, I would say it's a favorite and a kid game. Save that. Okay, Street Fighter 2. Let's say uh, that one's hidden. Uh, Super Mario Kart. Let's say Super Mario Kart is, let's say it's another favorite on its own. And Super Mario World. Let's say that's just a kid game and not a favourite. Okay, so, and then you and Squadron would just leave as is. Okay, so we've updated the metadata there. Now, if we go back slightly here, you can see the text underneath the system. It's got more information than it used to. So it says six games, so it's still six in total. We've got three of those are favourites and two of them are child friendly. So it's um, giving you an overview. Because we're in the full mode, we can see all that information. A quick way of seeing that. So I'd expect three favourites to show. Now in here, if I say, let's say favourites only for the system, there, I've only got the three favourites. So it's a quick and easy way to hit select and flip between um, a cut down list of just the ones that you play often that you just want to show quickly and easily or find more quickly. Um, and yeah, you can turn it back off just as easily like that, off. Okay, so now I've got all of them showing back. So it is very quick and easy to change most of this setting. Um, okay, so we've changed those, those settings there. Now, to really see more of this take effect, we'll need to change the mode from full to kiosk. So we can just flip into that mode now. And remember, you've got all these extra options like scraper and configure input and UI settings. And when we go in UI mode and go to kiosk, we will lose some of those um, menu options and we'll also lose the option to change it back to full. So there's a workaround to get back to the full menu once you're in kiosk or kid. So first we choose kiosk and go back. So it thinks briefly there, and I go back again. So it set us back in emulation station. It knows now we're in kiosk mode, which is a bit more locked down. If we go to the SNES. Okay, so it's, now it says five games because if you remember we hid one. I've already managed to forget which one we hid, but one's hidden, I remember that. So that's why we've got five games. Three of those are favorites and two of them are um, child friendly. Okay, so yeah, obviously you can't see the hidden one. And these are the other ones. So that way, in this mode, 
um, it's much more easy to manage it's got those extra options to just find your favorites you can still if you press start uh, no sorry wrong button if I press select I can still say favorites only so if I press OK it's cut it down to that three again so you can still flip between that option um, I can still choose the surprise me option but if I'm to press the start button now all I've got is sound settings and quit it's taken out all of those settings that could really change um, areas that you don't want to change and in quit like I mentioned earlier you can't now quit to um, just quit emulation station to get back to the command line it's forcing you to come back to this uh, setting or turn it off completely okay now um, you can see it's pretty easy to change all those settings you can set whichever games you want to have whatever settings but underneath this um, you will want to change a particular option when you need to get back to that full mode so one way of doing that is with a combo key press on your joypad so there's a default which if you press a certain combination it go back to full or you can edit a text file and I'll show you both ways so the default to get back to full because obviously we can't do it through this anymore is to press up up down down left right left right a b and what that should do that should reset the setting go back to full and then restart emulation station so I'll try that now up up down down left right left right a b okay maybe I did that wrong try that again okay I think I had that a bit wrong there it's up up down down left right left right b a so up up down down left right left right b a there we go it's updated the xml so now it's in um, the full mode but for whatever reason it hasn't automatically gone back to emulation station here so I'll just um, manually get back there so just type emulation station press enter okay so we're back in emulation station we're back in full mode now for some reason the first time I tried that when it just rest when I restarted emulation station manually it decided to kind of go into a weird weird child mode full mode hybrid I don't know quite what happened there but um, broadly it's fairly uh, consistent and I imagine in one of the future releases of this um, it should emulation station should automatically restart because I think it has before but at the moment it did seem to just stop in the command line interface and then you restart it yourself like I say though you don't have to use the key combo to change it back into full mode you can just change the manu um, the file manually yourself and I'll show you that in a minute but one thing you do need to be aware of is in um, emulation station when you've scraped game so for example in the Super Nintendo view um, I think it's Street Fighter we had wasn't it anyway um, in this view uh, we've scraped data and the information about hidden favorite and child friendly is stored in the same file in stored in the same game list.xml file which means that the existing scrapers the inbuilt scraper and steam itself scraper they're not aware of this version of emulation station if you like or they're not aware of the changes in the xml file which means that the two don't play that nicely together so i've scraped here and now i've added some metadata to those games and it's fine it works no problem at all but if I was to scrape this again let's say with Steven Self's tool if I rescrape this it would overwrite that file and I'd lose all of my custom settings so the best way really would be to do all your scraping first make sure you're happy with that and then apply these meta tag changes and um, separately if you try the inbuilt scraper um, once you've made some custom changes like hidden child friendly or whatever um, then I found that it really struggles to read the XML file um, it must get really confused by the extra tags that are showing in there and quite often it just won't scrape at all afterwards so um, yeah it's just something to be aware of don't make a load of these changes and then go and scrape everything again because you'll likely overwrite those files so it's just something to consider when you're setting this up really um, yeah so we've put those tags on those um, games but like you saw I quite quickly forget which we've applied which tags we've applied to quick game and um, which games but there is a way that you can change the theme to show you that and Ziggurana has produced like a, um, a variant of this carbon theme that will show you all that and we can run through that in a sec in a moment and I'll show you how you can set up your own theme to do the same or just use his um, example theme because basically it's the same as this carbon view so it's um, a really good example 
And what we do now, we'll drop back into the command line interface and we'll just check out some of the files that this process changes so you can see what's happening underneath. But um, in principle, that's it really. You just change the um, particular games to have certain flags. So press select, go to metadata, and then you've got your key flags down here. Favorite, kid game, or hit. Okay, so now we're in full mode. I can quit to quit emulation station. Obviously, if I was in those different modes, or well, actually just before I quit, I'll change that to child mode so you can see how that looks. UI settings, kid. Okay, back out of that. There we go. Now you don't see any system that you haven't added a whitelist ROM to. We're only seeing this system because this is the one that uh, we've actually said something is child friendly. It looks as though it's, um, there we go. So you've got two child friendly games. One of those is a favorite. So we go in there and we only see the two that we marked as um, uh, child friendly. That's why they're there. And um, if I press select, I can still choose favorites only. So, ooh, that errored. Um, okay, I didn't see that one before, but um, I guess this is why it's an experimental, so bear that in mind. Let's go back in and see what that looks like. Actually, I can't because my keyboard isn't playing ball. I will boot back into Emulation Station and we'll just check it out there. Okay, so we're back in Emulation Station and um, I've put it back into full mode for a moment. It did seem to have a bit of a moment when you put it into child mode and then say favorites on. Um, even trying to quit back to full when the favorites were on set in child mode, it had an issue. So I've set favorites off in child mode, restarted, and it's all fine, back to normal. Um, but again, this is an experimental section for a reason. But by and large, most features work pretty well. Okay, so what we were gonna do is go into the command line and just have a look at the files that are being edited underneath. So if I quit this, start and quit, we will go quit emulation station. We'll have a look at these files. Okay, here we are at the command line, and what we're going to do is check out the emulation station config file that uh, is created there. So if I change directory to uh, apt retropy configs all emulation station. And in here, the one we're interested in is that settings one. So if I type nano underscore es settings.cfg, we can see here the two extra parts, UI mode and UI mode passkey. So currently, if I go back into Emulation Station, it's full. And this is where I could set that to child, or, um, no, kid or um, kiosk. So you can force the mode there. Similarly, you can change the hotkey, or not, well, the combination key to press to set it back into full mode. So when you're in the emulation station interface in whatever mode, if you type this, it will reset that file to have um, full as the value. So it's a, an easy way. You could make that shorter or longer or whatever you like really. So that's the file that you can manually change if you don't want to have to put that hotkey setting in. Okay, so that's that one. And another key file really is the whole metadata that gets written. So if we go and in this directory we're going to change to game lists which is where they are so you get one for each system now we did work on the Super Nintendo one so we're going to change into SNES and here we've got the game list XML. so if we have a look at that okay so the first one here is ActRaiser now most of these are fairly standard and the ones that we want to care about are kid game hidden and play uh, sorry favorite kid game and hidden now, you don't have to use the Emulation Station interface to apply these if you don't want. You could go and manually change your game list XMLs here by putting these values in. And you can see it's just a favorite tag there, the value, true or false. Well, each of them are either true or false. And then close the tag, and that should be fine. So we can see that, uh, for example, in the ActRaiser one, we've got that it's not a kid game, it's not hidden, and it is one of the favorites, and so on. So that just follow down for each one. But this is the file that if you re-scrape, um, certainly when I tried with Steven Self Scraper, it just overwrites these uh, meta tags that it doesn't recognize and goes. So um, do be aware of that. You want to check that you don't overwrite all your hard work there. Um, again, I'm just it's just going to show those three values. They're the three new meta tags. 
and that's where they sit. So you can go and manually edit those if you need to. Now, one thing you notice when we went in the emulation station before and went into each game and changed those meta tags, it is a bit laborious to do each one, um, go into it, edit meta tags, change the settings, go back, do the next one. It could take quite a while. But as I was mentioning, there is a theme that makes it a bit easier. So what we'll do now is go back into emulation station and I've installed the theme in the normal way. Um, it's a custom one that's available as a link on the wiki so you can use this if you want um, if you want to get these extra features so I'll fire back up into emulation station now and we'll take a look okay back in emulation station we'll change the thing I'm in full mode press start go to UI settings and at the bottom here we've got theme set change that around to the new one I installed um, like I said, I'll put a link to this so you can use it if you want to. Select OK, or select it again there. Go back, and it's preloading in the background. And now you can see it looks hardly indifferent at all. But if we go into the Super Nintendo that we've been working on, there, you can see there's a couple of changes. So already Actraiser at the left hand side, I'm pointing at the screen but that's probably not helping you, you can see the heart at the top of the metadata just above rating so we know that's a favourite just by looking at it, the one below we can see is favourite and it's child friendly because it's got that teddy bear, the one below is neither favourite nor kid friendly but it is hidden so we know if we go into kiosk mode you won't see it or child mode you won't see it, next one just a favourite, just a kid mode and this one neither of them so those icons are quick and easy to see. And you can also see at the bottom, uh, right at the bottom, the text running along the line there. Next to menu, you've got Y Kid Game and X Favorite. So rather than go and edit the metadata for each one, you can just press X or Y on the joypad and it will just immediately apply that metadata tag. So if I tap X now, nothing happens, um, which might be because of the type of controller I'm using or it might be some other setting that isn't quite and finalized in either the way I've set this up or the um, the experimental new emulation station but there is a fairly quick and easy way around this so if I press start and choose configure input if I reconfigure for whatever reason if I reconfigure this controller it works fine um, you, but if you do this you've got to bear in mind that if you've tweaked your controller file setting um, it will get overwritten again but that shouldn't be a problem usually because you I wouldn't have thought most people would tweak this but bear it in mind if you're doing this to get this working so anyway configure input detected a joypad and then I just go up down left right start select a b x y that's all the buttons I've got so I just skip these and this would go and overwrite those settings with exactly the same data but now it does seem to work when I try this next section which is a bit odd but there you go Okay. Right, so back in Super Nintendo. Now on UN Squadron, if I press Y or X, I should be able to. There we go. So I press Y, got the child friendly. Press X, got the favourite up. Let's say I changed my mind. X, Y, there you go. Let's go Street Fighter. Well, I can't change the hidden with the hotkey, but I can add those two. I can, Harvest Moon's got those. Let's remove them both. Act Trader add that one, take that one off. So it's really quick and easy to run through the whole collection with that method. Um, and that is just about everything really. So feel free to try it out. Like I say, don't do it on a system that you configured that's perfect as it stands because there are a few little tweaks that still need to happen on this. And it is an experimental because of that reason. But um, a lot of people I think would benefit from some of those features. I think the favorite option is really, really useful. Um, it cuts down on a lot of the the sort of, um, massive list you might get in particular systems. It's easier to use, it's a lot easier to give to children so you know that you can be more confident they're not going to screw up the configuration and generally it's great to see Emulation Station get a bit of development. So yeah, try it out and let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks.